Yeah, so, 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 so the reason that we're really concerned about this new variant is it's, it's, it's the most heavily mutated variant we've seen to date. It's radically different from other variants, and it carries some changes we've previously seen in different variants, but we've never seen them all together in one variant. And it also has other mutations that we've not seen before. So this constellation of different mutations is what's ra raising a lot of concern. So most of this we can predict from what's on paper. So in other words, we can see from previous variants what changes in the virus affect the ability of the virus to spread and transmit to other people and what changes in the virus impact or are likely to impact the immune response and may have uh, an effect on the efficacy of vaccination. So when we look at these mutations, and there are more than 30 mutations just in the one spike protein that's so important because it is the target for vaccines and we look at what's gone on in the past what this tells us is that this variant has the potential not only to spread more effectively and transmit more efficiently but also possibly to evade vaccine induced immunity and that's obviously a real concern yeah so this originated well it was originally detected in botswana it's now in a number of provinces in South Africa, and it's in those provinces in South Africa that we're seeing case numbers increase quite rapidly. When you get a new variant like this in a population that's partially immune, and of course one of the issues um, is that the vaccination rate in South Africa is around 24% of people fully vaccinated, you do start to see viruses spreading more easily um, as they arise. So what we don't know yet is this is virus going to compete with the Delta variant that we've seen as the globally dominant strain of the virus, or is it not? Is it going to just peter out? At the moment, we're seeing increased numbers, and the latest data is there are probably something like two thousand, just over two thousand cases that we're seeing in, in different parts of sub-Saharan Africa. One case has popped up in Hong Kong, and again, this highlights the need for us to keep uh, genomic surveillance, to keep sequencing the virus. Um, and, uh, in, in cases in this country and elsewhere, so that we can keep tabs on this and other variants. It could cause milder or severe, more severe disease. We just don't know. So that's why we just need, need to keep an eye on it and also need to rely on colleagues in South Africa who are busy working with the virus to see whether it is more infectious and whether it does reduce the effectiveness of the current vaccines. Well, I think we've, we've always known that it's going to be difficult to contain coronavirus and that we're going to have to learn to live with it. And it may result in us having to have, you know, at least annual, uh, perhaps even more jabs that might contain different variants of the virus. At the moment, the most important thing is everybody gets fully vaccinated in this country and those who are eligible for boosters get their booster jabs because they're, they're, they will offer some protection against this variant and other variants. There's no question about that. So it's important that we get fully jabbed. We need to keep our border controls um, in place to make sure that we don't bring this variant into the country. Although many of us will be concerned from previous experience that once the virus is out there, it's out there and it's difficult to contain. So we need to keep monitoring with the very, very uh, efficient genomic surveillance capacity we have in this country, but you know, what's, what's going on with, with this and other variants. And we just all need to remain cautious. I know we're all rather fatigued about COVID and just hoped it would go away, but it hasn't gone away. And I think being cautious, and it comes back to those behaviours and, and really being, um, being concerned about other people in terms of social distancing and indeed wearing face masks in crowded, poorly ventilated indoor spaces. All of these things are quite important and we should just continue with those very cautious steps whilst we keep an eye on what's going on in South Africa. Yeah, but, you know, we still have very high levels of infection in this country. We saw more than 45,000 cases reported yesterday. We still have very high numbers of people getting into hospital and dying. So we still have a problem with coronavirus. What we can't afford to do is compound that by bringing in another variant that is going to be more infectious and perhaps not as efficiently recognised by current vaccines. So I think a lot of this is about our behaviour too, about people making sure they are getting fully vaccinated and boosted, and also just behaving a bit cautiously. What we don't want to happen is for further restrictions to be imposed that will impact on his ability to live a normal life and to enjoy Christmas. So I think we've just got to keep cautious, and I would, I would urge everybody just, just to remain vigilant at this stage.